Is this thing on? Mic check. One, two, three, four, 15. Can I get number 15? All right, Patrick. Well, you know, we have you in the press conference room, but it's all just for you. I feel like since there's a mic there, we should kind of walk through the Mahomes mic drop moments. Yep, yep, okay. Let's do it. I want to start with 2017 with the 10th pick in the NFL draft. The Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes. And it seems like forever ago, but at the same time, this is where you are now with the opportunity to play for the Chiefs. You've won a Super Bowl, but that moment has to live on in infamy for you. It was a cool moment because at that time, I still didn't know if I was even going to be a first-round draft pick. Yeah. Um, I came out, was supposed to be like a third, second-round draft pick, and just worked my tail off to try to do whatever I can to put myself in position to go to a great football team. And uh, luckily enough for me, it was the Kansas City Chiefs. And usually when you get drafted in the top ten, you don't get to go to a great organization because uh, they usually haven't had great seasons. But I got to go to the Kansas City Chiefs, and they were already a playoff team. Um, and the rest is history. Okay, I feel like the next mic drop moment has to be when you win the MVP. Like in your wildest dreams, when you go back to high school or middle school, or when you first started dreaming of the NFL, was that something you saw happening? No, not at all. I mean, for me, I, I never even thought about playing in the NFL until after my junior year at college. I still was like, hey, like, let's play football, but we're still going to play baseball at the end of the day. Um, and so to get in the NFL, uh, I sat for that whole year, that first year, and then get in there and I was throwing touchdowns and, and stuff was going well. I look back at it now and I'm like, man, just the stuff that I was doing and I didn't even know uh, anything. And I was still going out there and making some plays happen. Uh, it, it's cool and uh, something that I'll be able to have forever. How much of that, man, I still don't know what I was doing, you know what I mean, like that almost a rookie mindset, like you, you don't know what you don't know, do you still possess today? I think, I think there is still some that I gotta, I gotta keep learning. I've definitely really kind of evolved and gotten better and better at, at learning what defenses are trying to do to, to combat what we do and taking the easy completion, not always going for the home run. Um, but at the same time, I want to keep some of that. I want to keep that mindset of I'm going to give guys chances to make plays. Um, I'm going to throw it. I'm still going to go through my reads and, and look for that big alert guy down the middle of the field because he might just be open. Uh, all right, let's go to hoisting the Lombardi trophy. That's another huge mic drop moment. Uh, what do you remember most from that? It, it was surreal. I mean, that's the best way to explain it. I remember we, we win, we win, and then just like everybody storms the field where there's photos and everything like that, and you just try to take it in. You try to take in those moments, and uh, it was really cool. The end of that game was, was crazy. I feel like I didn't play my best football, but at the, at the end, we, we kind of pulled together and found a way to, to win it. Um, but it's a moment and a feeling that you want to get back to, and uh, it's something that I'm trying to work on this year. Okay, so what changes when you go from Patrick Mahomes, you know, NFL quarterback, to Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl winning NFL quarterback? Uh, a lot more commercials. I think that's, <laughs> that, that's the biggest thing. No, uh, it's, uh, the all seasons are definitely fun. Uh, I get to be a part of a lot of different things, get to go to golf tournaments, get to shoot commercials. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just playing football. You just love it. You get to go back home and, and train and get better and better. Um, but you definitely want to do whatever you can to, to lift that trophy up again. And that's something that you get to continue to work at. I love that you bring up the golf tournament because I was going to go there eventually, but let us talk about the match right quick. Mm -hmm. So you, Josh Allen, going against Brady, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, it has to be fun to play against them one on the field, but it seems like there's a camaraderie there too of like one generation versus the next. How would you describe what that's like from a personal level? Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I mean, Tom and Aaron, I've got to kind of hang out and be around them uh, several times now, and they're, they're great guys, man. Uh, they really have a great understanding for this league and this game um, and want to pass on their knowledge. Um, and so Tom, Tom is like, you, you want to not like Tom, but he's just like the best guy. So it, it, it's, hard, it's hard to not like him, but to be able to play in golf tournaments and, and him give me kind of advice and stuff like that, I mean, he's the GOAT. You want to learn from the, the best, and uh, it, it's really cool to, to have that relationship with him. The conversations you've had with Tom Brady, you said that he's given you some good advice. What are some of those things that you lean into? You know, one of the first thing was after the AFC Championship game when we lost to him. I remember, I mean, obviously I'm I'm upset, sad, and I'm sitting in the locker room forever. And I I w start to walk out, and he and he's there waiting, and uh, he could be celebrating. He's going to the Super Bowl and everything like that. And all he said to me, and it it wasn't a big thing. He said, "Hey, just keep doing it how you're doing. It. You're doing it the right way." And as a young quarterback. I mean, you, you just go out there and play and try to have fun and, and do whatever you can to put your team in the best position to win. But when the, when the GOAT's saying that and he's saying you're doing it the right way, it kind of shows you that you're, you are doing it the right way. And so that was big for me. And then after that, just the conversations of just how he does stuff in the offseason versus how he trains in the season and those little things like that. I mean, he won't give me all the secrets yet, but uh, hopefully one day I'll get all the secrets and kind of can uh, put those into my game. Maybe when he actually retires. 
Yeah, I'm, just try, I'm trying to beat him. So as long as I can play a little bit longer, I might be able to beat him before he retires. Okay. What have you learned from him off the field? And then tell me what you learned from him just watching him on the field. Yeah, well, off the field, you, you learn how to, to manage kind of everything. Like, you want to be able to be a, a family man and be with your family. And you want to be able to do these different things that, where you're going into businesses and, and helping out and shooting commercials and doing this stuff. Um, but at the same time, keeping football first. And I think that's the, the, the greatness in Tom Brady is no matter how much off the field stuff he does, football is always the main priority. And uh, he makes sure to keep, that, keep it that way. And so you watch that. And then at the same time, you go back to him on the field and he's always getting better. I feel like every single year he finds something he can get better at. And that's what I want to do is I want to keep getting better as my career goes on so that I can play hopefully, maybe not as long as him, but pretty long as well. Okay, at the age of 27, right? You're 27. Yeah. Do you see yourself playing at 45? I'll try to. I just don't know how, how he does it. Uh, I, I want to play as long as I'm still playing great football. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. And I think if I can continue to make my body uh, in better and better shape and I can continue to learn uh, through film study and through the coaches that I have and the players that are around me, that I'll try to play as long as I can. Uh, as long as I don't, I don't want a big dip in production. I don't want to be just hanging on. I want to make sure that I'm still playing at a high level. All right, we got some time before that happens, so we're not worried about that. <laughs> Let's talk about the first time that you played against Brady, because this is great. We're walking into our sixth meeting between you two, and like as fans of the game, as people who work in this sport, we love it. Mm -hmm. But your first time going through it, what do you remember? I remember there was a little bit of nerves. I was, uh, we were up in New England. I came out and I kind of struggled to miss some easy throws early in the game, just throwing them like 120 miles an hour every single time. And I calmed down finally, um, and we, we made it a game. We battled, and we got it back to where I believe we were tied, and they had a, one of those Tom Brady patented late drive down the field, kick a field goal with no time left, and, and they won. Um, but uh, it's, it was a great battle, and I think I settled in in that game, and that's something that I've learned from throughout my entire career. Mm -hmm. What was that first handshake like? What are you saying there? Yeah, I mean, you just, at that time, it, I was so upset that we lost that it, I don't even remember what I said, but it was just kind of a good luck the rest of the year, hopefully see you in the playoffs, and, and I think you, you know that. I mean, we ended up seeing them in the playoffs later that year. Exactly. Uh, wasn't the last time, and since we're going into uh, the sixth meeting, he's up 3-2. What would you say that you've learned in battling a Tom Brady-led team? Because they, they kind of have a characteristic about them. Yeah, well, first off, they're going to take advantage of mistakes. I think that's, that's a big thing. I mean, they're going to, if you make a mistake on the field, if, you, if I throw an interception or if you have a fumble or if something like that happens, he's going to make you pay and get points on the board. Um, and then he's going to manage the game. He's, he's going to make some plays when he needs to make plays. But at the same time, he's not going to make that big mistake. So you've got to go out there and play uh, a near-perfect football game to win. And um, Another thing is, I think everyone knows, is he's never out of it. And I think that's something that I try to pride myself on as well, is never being out of the game. Um, and so whenever you play against a Tom, Tom Brady-led team, you make sure you kind of keep that foot down and you, you keep that foot down on the pedal and try to do whatever you can to finish the game off. Let's talk about you and where you stand just in, like, the history of the NFL. Because you're at this point now where you're not old, but you're not young. Yeah. You're a guy that kids are, like, at home playing Madden with, that guys are trying to imitate in the backyard. At what point do you become a veteran? Do you feel like one? I feel like a veteran just in the sense of my locker room is so young. Uh, we have a lot of young players, a lot of new players. Um, and so I feel like I'm, I'm one of those guys, I think I'm like the third or fourth oldest or longest tenured player on the Chiefs. So uh, I, I've been here for six years now and I've learned a lot from the guys and the leaders before me. Um, but I, I feel young at heart, but in this locker room I feel like a veteran. I try to pass on that knowledge to everybody and kind of get everybody ready to roll. Do you ever think about the fact that you are playing a role in the evolution of the game? I, I, I think about it a little bit, but at the same time, I just try to go out there and compete. Um, I think that's what you see on the football field. If it's the sidearm throws or if it's the scrambling around and making stuff happen, it's that I'm trying to go out there and win. Um, it's not tr I'm not trying to show off or do anything like that. It's just trying to be a competitor and win a football game. And uh, it's definitely you've seen more and more quarterbacks being able to do that. And I think it's more of, of the coaches and the, the people that put the quarterback in those positions. They want guys that want to go out there and compete at the end of the day. Okay, let me ask you this. you got to keep it real. Mm -hmm. You're a high school coach, okay, and you're teaching a kid how to play quarterback. Do you show them the sidearm throws? Are you letting them like go out and do their thing? Like, how would you coach up a kid these days? So I always go back to the fundamentals first. So okay. you got to learn the fundamentals. You got to perfect those. And once they perfect the fundamentals, I, I tell them you can have some fun and try some stuff out. 
but they got to know if they try some stuff out and it's bad, I'm, I'm going to get on them and they're not going to be able to do it again. So that's that's how I was taught with uh, Coach Reed, uh, Coach Bienemy, and then with Coach Kingsbury in college, and then Coach Cook, my high school football coaches. As long as it worked, they were fine with it. But if it didn't work, I wasn't allowed to do it again. Okay, so it clearly has been working because no one's told you to stop. <laughs> yeah, there, there's been a couple instances where I throw it and you kind of see me. I'm like, ah, that was too much. That was a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit more about improvisation because you're so great at it. What are you looking at or to? Reading, reacting, like what's going on in Patrick Mahomes' mind when you're coming up with some of those plays that we have never seen put on film before? Well, Coach Reed does a good job of letting us kind of have that creativity. Um, we, we, we draw up these plays and then we'll actually go out there and practice them on the side. When special teams are going, you'll see Travis come up with ideas, you'll see uh, Coach Nagy, you'll see Coach Bienemy, you'll see all of us kind of work together to kind of come up with these shovel passes or these fake quarterback motions and all this different type of stuff because we want to keep taking the game to the next level. I mean, defenses are good in this league. Uh, a lot of great defenses, and you don't want to just be stagnant and be satisfied with where you're at. You want to keep evolving, and that's something that we really take pride in. Mm -hmm. How is Patrick Mahomes now, being the veteran in the locker room, different from the guy who stepped into the NFL in 2017? I don't think I'm, I'm that much different other than I, I, I get to talk a little bit more than I used to. I'm still in the locker room, uh, shooting basketball, uh, kind of joking around. I'll, I'll still play PlayStation every once in a while, Xbox, with, with some of the, the guys whenever Sterling's asleep and I can kind of get some free time. I'm still, I'm still a young kid at heart. Um, but when you're in the locker room and you got to be serious, I'm that guy that kind of start, I think starts us off being serious and, and getting us locked in because we know we have to handle business. Another mic drop moment that I forgot to mention is the fact that you, your father. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just having a daughter, and I remember talking to you about eight months ago, maybe it was January, and you were saying, listen, my daughter's got an arm. She's yes. like throwing things and we're leaning into it. How is her development now? She's still showing you some athlete tendencies? Oh, 100%. I think uh, the, the the better thing than even having the arm, because she still has the arm. She still can chunk She still can chunk the baseball or whatever ball she has uh, throughout the whole entire living room. But uh, she, she got up to a soccer ball now and she like kicks it, but we didn't teach her that. I think she just watched us go into soccer games and, and learned that she'll, if you see a soccer ball laying around, she'll kick it, dribble it down. Um, and I think she's, she's a natural athlete. And uh, hopefully my son's the same way when he comes here in uh, November or December. That might literally be the cutest gender reveal I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Like I'm just gonna wake up every morning and watch it now, <laughs> watching you jump into the pool and be so excited. So what kind of stage dad are you going to be like if your son decides to play basketball, football, or any of the sports that you played? I'm going to stay out of the way. I think that's going to be the best thing for me. I'm going to help teach my son, my daughter, all the fundamentals and whatever they want to learn. But at the same time, I'm, I want to stay out of the way and let it be about them. Um, that's what my dad did growing up. That's what my parents did was they, they let it be about me and let me just go out there and have fun, didn't pressure me to do anything. Um, and I think that's why I'm in the position I am today. Mm -hmm. The idols that Patrick Mahomes had growing up, what would they be? You played so many different sports mm -hmm. and you can probably take something from different players, but now you're the guy that everyone looks up to. I'm just curious who were the ones for you. Yeah, so early it was Alex Rodriguez. I was a baseball player. I played shortstop. I was taller. Um, so he was kind of the first shortstop that I looked up to. My dad played on the Rangers with him, so I got to see that. Um, and then in, in basketball, I would probably say it was it was actually LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony. I was a big Carmelo fan growing up, so uh, I watched him play. Um, and then football, it was Brett Favre, and then it was Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that that was those style of a play. And I watched Aaron all the way through college, and I still watch him to this day because I feel like I have a similar style to him. Um, and uh, it helps me kind of go out there and, and use that creativity that you see Brett and you saw Aaron use. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, I love, I love Tom. <laughs> love, I love, love Tom, but. Uh, <laughs> I was a Cowboys fan growing up, and Tom was always winning uh, with the Patriots, so I, I, I couldn't love him too much. <laughs> Becoming a father, how does that change who Patrick Mahomes is, Holmes is at heart? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me um, is you, when you go home, you just have to you, you have to put on that game face again. Um, you have some long days up here at the facility, um, but whenever you're home and you're you're with your daughter and and my son when he when he gets here, is you have to be dad. You have to be energized, ready to play. And uh, Sterling has a ton of energy, and she loves to run around and and do everything. And I mean, it, it makes you happy uh, just to be around someone that just enjoys every single day like that. Which game face is harder to put on? <laughs> Oh, I think I think sometimes it's at home. Sometimes you're tired, and I I know uh, Brittany's tired, and she does a great game face as well. Uh, being pregnant and having a, a one and a half, almost almost getting ready to be two year old, um, she puts on a great game face as well. But uh, yeah, you get home, you're tired sometimes. You want to just lay on the couch, and Sterling does not play mm -hmm. that. She wants to go out there and play at all times. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.